So let's practice a little bit with KNN. So download this data set from GitHub. Uh, let's play a little bit with it. So first of all, we have to do this exploratory phase. So here you can see that we have a couple of features, x1 and x2, that are numerical values. And this guy is a factor that takes the levels no and yes. Okay. We can try to summarize this. You can see that x1 goes to minus a to seven more or less. The median and the mean are more or less the same. So probably the distribution is uh, is not skewed. We can actually try to plot this histogram data x1. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. And the same with x2, pretty nice. So we can move forward. So we can plot the data. Remember, width applies to everything inside. I'm going to plot x1 and x2 as coordinates and the color is going to be given by y and as you can see here we have this data set with this red part this black plot and, and black part and we have some overlap in this region okay so here we're going to split the data set in uh, in two subsets one is the training and the other one is the validation set i'm going to use this function sample int if you go to the help it tells you that sample int gives you a sequence of integer numbers of size n. Okay, so for instance, sample int numbers from one to 10, I'm, I'm going to sample just three of them. Okay, so you, you get the point. So here I'm going to sample as many uh, numbers in principle as the number of rows of the data set. Remember that we have a thousand observations, but I'm taking only 80% eight per of the data set. So if you change this, you can play a little bit with the proportions. So basically, here I'm going to take the 80% of the number of rows, which is actually 800. I'm going to sample those. Okay, this is going to be the subsample of the of all the data set. I'm going to call this the train index. Remember that this is an integer number. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So if you summarize this, you can see that it, this goes from one to a thousand. So this is pretty nice. And the median is around 500. Okay, but what is interesting here is that the length is just 800. We're going to do now a subsample of the data set. So basically, remember the syntax: take this data frame, take these indices, these integer numbers, and take all the columns. Okay, this is why this is empty. And I'm going to create a validation data set, excluding all the numbers that I have plugged into the training data set. So you can try to inspect this here. 800 observations, 200 observations, but beyond that, it basically they have the same properties. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how to do this KNN with uh, a very simple library, which is called class. I'm going to devote another video to how to do KNN with the caret library, but here I'm going to use class. So you can just set this to whatever number you want, just for reproducibility. And here is the syntax. So this is the function KNN, this belongs to class. The first argument is going to be the number of features from the training data set. Here I'm going to plug the features from the validation data set. And here I'm going to plot the factors again from the training data set. And this is the k, the value for, for nearest neighbors. In this case, k equals 3. So if we run this, and then we can create a confusion table in a very simple way. So here I'm going to, to put actually, yes, so this is. Now I'm going to reverse this one. So the first argument is going to be the expected value and, and the second argument is going to be the predicted one. So we have the confusion table. So this is true, true negatives, this is true positives, false negatives and false positives. So as you can see, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to leave you this script online. So I have created this function that, that actually will give you all the statistics from the true negative, false negatives, accuracy, sensitivity, and so on and so forth. So just take a look at the output. So here, as you can see, the accuracy is pretty high, precision to high too, sensitivity. And this is again, the confusion table. Okay, so this is a very handy function that you can copy and paste in your own code. Okay, so let's take a look again at the table. As you can see here, we have eight, plus 10, 18 values in, in the false category. What happens if we change the K? For instance, instead of three neighbors, let's plug uh, 51 neighbors. And again, I think it's better to copy the table. Okay, here we go. 
So in this case we have a little bit less uh, false negatives and the same fal uh, false positives. So okay, we have improved a little bit our data, our fitting, and actually the accuracy increases and also the sensitivity. And you can play a little bit with this code. So you actually you can plug 199 and so on and so forth. If you want to see what happens with the classification, for instance, in the last case that I've run, which is 51, you see that the greens are more or less well classified and, and also the blues. And we have a little bit of overlap in there that has to do with these uh, false negatives and false positives. And this is pretty much all that I wanted to tell, talk to you about today. If you have time and you want to play a little bit more with the script, you can take a look at this uh, last part of the code. And actually, if you add this new parameter, probability equals true, it gives you probabilities instead of categories. So instead of giving you yes or no, it's going to give you the probability in each class. And you can use that because if you remember from the video on validation, we can try to draw a rock curve and the rock curve it depends on the threshold. So if you remove this, basically the threshold is going to be in 0.5, uh, kind of, okay? So if you change that, you can try to, to plot a a rock curve, I give you my own code here, so let's run this and you can see the output. Okay, forget about ggplot. Well, let's load it. Okay, ggplot2. Okay, so this is a kind of poor, poor man's rock curve, but you, you get the idea. So you uh, you can be in one end here and zero, zero, one, one. And the area under the curve is pretty high, and that has to do with the accuracy of the, of the method. Okay, so so this is all you need to play with Kanan. So if you go back to the script, basically everything is more or less in here. Okay, so Kanan is uh, nice, it's easy to understand, it's easy to play with, and this function Kanan in the library class I think is ready for prime time.